Hi, I'm Natalie Wood, and I've got my husband, John, on the set with me this evening for Mission TV Live. And, you know, as Stephanie told you, we've got a, a fun show planned. We've got a lot of um, education I think we're going to gain tonight. When we started talk, talking about our topic with our team here, a lot of us were like, what is this? What are we talking about? And those of you that uh, read our Facebook page this week, you know that that was our question. Annual sacrifice offering, what is it? Because many of us do not know what it is. We don't know what it's for, where it came from, or anything about it. But it is coming up this coming Sabbath, November 9. So, but before we get into our topic, I just want to share with you a text. And maybe this gives us a little hint about what the point of annual sacrifice offering is. This is uh, Luke chapter 12 and verse 33. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. So welcome to the show, dear. Hi, darling. It's good I, to be here. I wanted to apologize to our viewers also for being late coming on. We had major technical difficulties right at the last minute. Thank Always the Lord. happens right then. I know. Thank the Lord. I mean, we check everything beforehand, and we were having trouble with audio this afternoon. And anyway, so we just are so thankful that we're on now. Yeah, with the so, equipment that we have, it is a miracle. Yeah, we have some old equipment. We have yes. some new equipment we're so thankful for, but we yes. also have some old equipment that needs replaced. Yes. So, but that's Big the... Time. That's the reality that we deal with here at Mission TV. We're just moving forward with what we, what we have. Right. Um, but the vision for this channel is to go, because um, this message needs to go to the whole church. Um, it's critical for mm -hmm. the sake of those that are dying overseas without any, any access to the gospel mm -hmm. at all. Okay, well, let's get started with our topic. But before we do that, I want to remind you that we're going to have some Skype calls. And during the second half of the show, we're going to actually be taking live phone calls. If you're brave, you can be on the live. Otherwise, you can email us or call in and ask your question to the young lady answering the phone, and she will send it through to us. So just feel free to participate. We long for feedback and participation, and we just, we just love to have people involved in what we're doing because we care about it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So the phone number so that you can prepare yourself is 423-413-7321. Go ahead and call. She is standing by, but we're not going to patch them through live until a little later in the show. So 423-413-7321. And the email address is live at missiontv.com if you'd like to email. Or you can Facebook us at Mission TV Live. Or send us a tweet at mission TV underscore com. So those are all the ways you can participate. So please take advantage. All right, honey, let's get into our topic for tonight. Okay, well, the annual sacrifice offering, what is it? Uh, almost everybody that I talked to had no clue what it was. Um, a lot of people hadn't even heard about it, what annual sacrifice offering is. But um, I want to kind of set the stage, because we're going to find out tonight. But I want to set the stage with some quotes from Ellen White that I found. Um, this is from uh, a pamphlet called An Appeal for Missions. It was written in 1898, so it was a while ago. But um, uh, this, is, this is so, in, in, in a lot of ways, it's even more, more pressing today, given what we could do if, if we would start. <laughs> but she says, there is a burden upon my soul in regard to the destitute mission fields there is great need of funds to advance the work in foreign fields. Now, a lot of people I hear say, we shouldn't send so much money overseas. Yeah. There's a lot of work to do here. The truth is, hardly anything is going overseas, and the vast majority is staying here. As a matter of fact, the statistic is that 92% of all Christian giving goes to the 6.5% that speak English. That's a little bit unbalanced. <laughs> Very unbalanced. She says, the missionaries are not sustained as God requires they should be. For want of funds, workers are not able to enter new fields. Now, what's cool about this offering is that it's directly going to affect this. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so, it's like I'm upset that very few people know about this, um, this offering because it's really going to affect this a lot. It says, okay. the world is perishing in its misery, but this hardly moves even those who claim to believe the highest and most far-reaching truth ever given to mortals. Wow. 
That's incredible. They're, hardly moves. Hardly moves. That's a pretty rebuking statement, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There's a video called Depraved Indifference. Where there's indifference to the needs of those. We that, showed that a few weeks ago on the yeah, live. And, we, and, and we're going to show it again. Yeah. <laughs> there is a lack of the love which led Christ to leave his heavenly home and take man's nature that humanity might touch humanity and draw humanity to divinity. Mm. Now this is amazing here. This, there is a stupor, a paralysis upon the people of God which keeps them from understanding what is needed for this time. Oh. So there's something going on in our heads that keeps us from really seeing what we need to do. Well, so it's beyond just not knowing that there's a need and it's beyond just thinking that it's almost fulfilled and it's mm -hmm. beyond thinking lots of money's going over there. It's a paralysis. Mm -hmm. It's like we're in the enchanted land. It's like, wow. just relax. Everything's going to be fine. It reminds me of something from Pilgrim's Progress. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I appeal to the officers of our conferences to make earnest efforts in our churches to arouse them to give of their means for sustaining foreign missions. We don't hear too earnest much of this. Efforts. We don't get too much of this. No in our churches. In fact, yeah, it's almost the opposite. But this is, this is the command, this is the call. And I believe, I believe that when, when God's people that are honestly seeking Him and doing all they can to live up to the light that they have, when they learn about this, when they learn about the call and the opportunities, they're going to come forward mm -hmm. and they're going to make a huge difference in God's kingdom. And yeah. what that when means... They know. What that means is that thousands will enter the, the kingdom of heaven that wouldn't otherwise. So Maybe it's, millions. It's Hopefully life. millions. Yeah, it's life Maybe and death. Maybe billions. There are billions out there. Yeah. And it's life and death. It's not just it a program. This is, this is people's lives. Okay. The great day of the Lord is soon to open upon us. We should now use every ability we possess to arouse our people. This is one of the, the keynotes that I have playing in my head. Whenever we talk about out. Mission TV, you know, is every ability we possess to arouse our people for missions. Right. You know, it's not, it's not something that we just coast along and let, let happen. It's, it's, it can't we be We have like to be that. intentional about it. Absolutely. Not wait. I mean, we have to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and do something. Do and dare. Do That's and what dare she for says. God. Absolutely. Do and dare. Yeah. <laughs> So we should now use every ability we possess to arouse our people. In other words, don't just sit back and do nothing. And, and, and the beautiful thing is that when we do that effort, then it's not just me going and doing it. We need a group. We need a crowd. We need, we need a, a church. Let the words of the Lord by the prophet Malachi be brought home to every soul. Now what's, what's amazing is I had always thought of Malachi 3. You know that chapter. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. It's the, the tithe chapter. There's going to be fruit in my home. Yeah. Yeah. So fruit we always home. use that when calling for tithes. But she uses this passage in the middle of an impassioned appeal for foreign missions. Mm. So she's focusing on the offerings. You notice it says bring all the tithes. Yeah, it is plural, isn't it? It's plural. I used to think that that's like today's tithe and then next month's tithe. But it's actually multiple tithes. A tithe for the ministers, you know, salaries and Bible workers. A tithe for missions. And then actually another half a tithe. This is the basic requirement of the um, Old Testament the Hebrews. Hebrews. Yeah, another half a tithe for what they called um, the temple tax, which is what I consider um, local church local budgets. Local church type yeah. of things. But she used this passage in the middle <clears throat> of the Passion Appealed. For foreign missions, the Lord designs that the means entrusted to us shall be used in building up his kingdom. That's why he gives us money in the first place. His goods are committed to his stewards, that's us, that they may be carefully traded upon and bring back a revenue to him in the saving of souls. That's the purpose he gives us our success. Okay, now this is a video that I took uh, 2011, like January. And this is Pastor Gary Krause. He's the director of the Adventist Mission. And anybody know what Adventist Mission is? Well, I do, but I have a little bit of you know, <laughs> history with using the term. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to ask these guys, what's the difference between Adventist Mission and 
global, and global mission. mission? Okay. And frontier mission. Well, let's go ahead and watch the video. Okay, here we go. As church, Christian church in general, we have tended to put our resources where the church is strongest. And I think we need to confess that we've done that. We, we have we've put money, time, personnel mm -hmm. into places where they've already had an opportunity to hear about Jesus. Uh, I'm not saying that they don't need more opportunity, but we've tended to put uh, our resources where the light is the strongest. Mm -hmm. And so we need to confess that and we need to start do something about it. I think we have started to. I think, the, for example, the 1040 window, the focus is much stronger now. Uh, it's now become part of the vocabulary of Seventh-day Adventists. I think we're now looking at the cities. More people live in the cities now than ever before. And yet the Seventh-day Adventist church is strongest in rural areas and on islands. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're, we've, we're focused where the, where the people aren't. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I mean, you, you look at the decline in the 30s. Um, if somebody gave ten dollars in tithe, they give an additional six dollars for four missions. Where today they give twenty-eight cents. I mean, yeah, that's that's to the to the regular mission offering. And right. I, I mean, part of my job is to promote that offering. I lament it. I look at it every day. But I also have to concede that there are so many other things uh, that people are giving to related to mission as well. There are hundreds more of mission operations in the Seventh-day Adventist Church than there was back then. So I think, uh, I'm, I'm sure the giving has declined, but I don't want to just say that, you know, outright that they have just stopped giving. They haven't. I think church members are still very generous, but I think that that spirit of sacrificial giving. When I was a kid growing up at the end of the week of prayer, mm -hmm. we had the annual sacrifice offering. It was an annual sacrifice. Um, my parents would give a week's wages. You don't hear that sort of talk too much, too much today. Um, and so I, I look at my own life and I say, you know, am I giving what God wants me to give? Okay, so this is what um, Pastor Gary Krause was saying um, about that's what I heard about annual sacrifice offering. That's when you found out about it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, th I think I'd heard it mentioned a couple times before, but he mentioned annual sacrifice offering and then talk talking about how his family would give an entire week's wages at one yeah. time. I'm like, I don't ever remember hearing that. We used to do in-gathering. We don't do that anymore. But, um, okay. This is the rest of this appeal. Um, those who have means should understand that now is the time to use it for God. Let not means be absorbed in multiplying facilities where the work has already been established. Hmm. Do not add building to building where many interests are now centered. Use the means to establish centers in new fields. Think of our missions in foreign countries. Some of them are struggling to even gain a foothold. They are destitute of even the most meager facilities, and I have seen this over and over. Instead of adding to facilities already abundant, build up the work in these destitute fields. Again and again, the Lord has spoken in regard to this. His blessing cannot attend his people in disregarding his instructions. Now, this yeah, quote... And this was over 100 years ago. Yes. This quote uh, by Mrs. White, An Appeal for Missions, is a whole article with a lot of amazing instruction uh, an appeal for foreign missions and amazing instruction, how we mm. should live our lives with that perspective. And it's so good that I actually put it up on the Mission TV website. I didn't tell you this. Okay. But if you're watching on missiontv.com right now, right above the video, you'll see uh, an appeal for missions by Mrs. Ellen White. Okay, you can click on that, not right now, but later. <laughs> <laughs> you can click on that and the whole text is right there because it's like one of those can obscure writings. Can they download writings. it or they can copy, copy it and, and paste, paste it, it out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure, send it, you know, whatever. And um, just to give you an example, uh, just to set the stage as we go to talk to Pastor Rick McEdwards and Doug Van, this is a language map of the Southern Asia Pacific Division, just one division. A billion people living in that division, three times as many as live in the North American division. And you can see all the red represents the areas where the language groups have no Adventist work. Wow, unreached. Unreached. Okay. So we're talking over a thousand languages. Yeah. And again, I want to remind you with this graph, I know we've shown it a lot before, but to take a look at what's happening to our world mission giving. It is almost statistically abandoned just living on the very basics. In 1981, $23 million was given to foreign missions. And in 2011, 
$23 million was given to foreign missions, although it's only worth about $8.5 million now. So we've got a situation. It's because of inflation. Yes, because of inflation. So okay, now, so we're going to pop out. We're going to go over to Skype and find Pastor Rick McEdward. Looks like he's here. He's online. We're going to call him. I expect that he will answer shortly. Um, is that camera okay? Yep. Okay. Hello, Rick. Hi, John. Hi, Natalie. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And where, where are you at this time? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You want to turn your computer off? No, you can't turn the computer. Just that website. <laughs> MissionTV.com website. Oh, no, you can't turn the computer. Just that website. Can you hear us? Can you Sorry. hear us now? No, no problem. Can, can you hear us? Yes, I sure can. Awesome. Oh, good. Awesome. Praise the Lord. So, Pastor McEdwards, can you tell us about what is annual, annual sacrifice offering? Well, I, as you have mentioned, it's, a, it's really, uh, I think, the most exciting of all opportunities to share of our means. Mm. And it's really the most direct way of giving to foreign mission. I just want to, that's as clear as I can say it, but it's got a much longer history than that. Okay, so it's the most direct way of giving to foreign missions. What do you mean by that? Where does it actually go and how much goes? 100% uh -huh. of the annual sacrifice offering goes to frontline um, missions in church planting, in uh -huh. starting um, churches in unreached areas of the world. Really? And uh, we're talking about global mission pioneers who are uh -huh. out there who are uh -huh. living on a, on a modest living wage, a stipend, uh -huh. and who are starting a, a church Mm -hmm. um, where there has never been an Adventist church before. Mm. Mm. Some of these global mission pioneers, like the ones in India, they're getting $60 a month. Yeah. Yes, yeah. some of them even around the world. It, it, it depends on the, the economy mm -hmm. where they're at, but it uh, uh -huh. depends on where, but some less than that, yes. Wow. So if somebody gave $100 to annual sacrifice offering, yeah, that makes imagine the impact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, a $200 a month gift, a hundred dollar a month gift, and quite honestly, I know people who you who use a hundred dollars for chewing gum and candy bars. Um, I read a statistic once, John. You'll like that there is more spent on chewing gum in North America than there is on foreign mission. Wow! Oh, that's heartbreaking. <clears throat> when I read that, I quit chewing gum. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> if I chewed it, I quit too. <laughs> Where are we putting our priorities? Right. Wow. Wow. Mm. Okay, so what, how did annual, now that's kind of a funny thing because before this show, before we asked you to be on the show, which I appreciate you coming on and, uh, and guarding us from heresy, um, <laughs> how, did, how much did you know about uh, the annual sacrifice offering? Well, I've, I've known about it for quite a long time because uh -huh. I have been involved in global mission for the last uh, 12, 13 years. Okay. Uh, but quick. if I did not have a direct involvement in global mission, uh -huh. I would not have known much about it. Wow. I'll be honest. And how long have you been a pastor? I've been a pastor for over 20 years, yes. And how long have you been in active mission service? Um, He's well, 12 years. I, I would say that over 20 years, because of pastoring well, and being a church member, we are all missionaries. Amen. Right. <laughs> but how long have I been involved in foreign mission service sure. um, across cultural mission uh, since okay. 2001? Okay. So, okay. So then. So when you were a pastor, you didn't know about it. So how you know, you, you hear about the different offerings, 13th Sabbath offering, annual sacrifice offering, mission offering, mm -hmm. um, world budget offering, and quite honestly, it's confusing. Mm -hmm. What goes to what? What goes to where? Who gets what? How do I best support um, mission on the front line? Mm -hmm. and, and so actually, you know, I did a little research to kind of dig in a little bit, mm -hmm. and I found out that the annual sacrifice offering was started in 1921. 1921. Now, 
think about that. The quotes you just read from from Ellen White, which are so compelling. I mean, mm. anybody that reads these can't help but have their heart beat fast for what mm. God wants to do around the world. Yeah. 1921, Ellen White had been dead for a few years, but they're still reading her counsel, as uh -huh. we are today, maybe uh -huh. a little closer to that time. Uh -huh. And they're saying, how do, we, how do we raise money for foreign mission? And then something happened. And World War I, post-World War I, there was an economic collapse okay. where missionaries, mm -hmm. the world budget of the church was, was not met. So there wasn't an adequate, was not adequate giving mm. to support the world budget, and they were threatened with retrenching missionaries who had been placed following mm. World War One when people were so motivated to share God's love. I mean, they'd, they'd watch newsreels of people being killed yeah. in all these fields around the world, the, the global scenarios that had been taking place. Yeah. Um, definitely, they believed, as we do now, that Jesus was coming soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to think of missionaries being retrenched at a time home. when everybody ought to be hearing the, the word of God right, right, right. was unthinkable. Yeah. And they started the annual sacrifice offering in 1922 uh -huh. out of this crisis. Uh -huh. And it was the main theme of the annual council in 1922. Wow. And how many, uh, how many church members were there at this time were in the Adventist church? Well, you know, um, the people who actually got involved in giving for the annual sacrifice offering, there was about 200,000 members uh -huh. at, at that time. I mean, it was a, it was a much smaller number. Right. And of those who actually gave, uh -huh. the average giving was what we would say would be one, uh, six days of salary. Wow. Uh, you know, the appeal was for a week. Uh -huh. A sacrifice a week of your earnings mm -hmm. for the sake of foreign mission, mm -hmm. and the average of those who gave averaged out to be six days. So they came very close to their target wow. of sacrificing, which says to me that the spirit of sacrifice in those days was not small. Mm -hmm. They were willing and ready to mm -hmm. give even beyond their means. Mm -hmm. At an economic crisis. Yes. So if, if they were giving six days' worth of salary and they were challenged to give a week worth and we don't work on the seventh day, I guess they gave a week worth, right? <laughs> yeah, or, or uh, you know, how, how do we think about it yeah. today? No, yeah. we, we don't even know what it is. We've never heard of it. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it's for, so why do we give? Okay, so, so let's just say an average American earns, I'm just going to make it very easy, $52,000 a year. Now, that may be high or low for some. I'm just giving a simple number. One week of that would be $1,000. And yet, when the Sabbath school offering plate comes around, we feel like we're doing our duty by putting a quarter. I mean, I grew up in my family giving a quarter every time the offering plate came around. That's how I grew up. That was That was the... The, the road. So I don't know what it is today. Is it a dollar? Is it a five dollar bill? Yeah. But the think thinking of the sacrifice that would give a thousand dollars or two thousand or ten thousand, depending on your income, mm -hmm. I think it's a call to us today. Yes. To examine our hearts. Yes. Yeah, we did some math earlier and even if we made, you know, nearly minimum wage, we could we would be giving if we gave a week's worth of wages, we'd be giving two hundred dollars. That's right. You know, and if every church member in North America was able to give an average of two hundred dollars, imagine the difference that would be made. That'd be but what? What did we figure out? Two hundred million dollars? That would be ten times what's given by the average Adventist for the whole year. Right. And yet, you think about even the Christmas season, which is not far away. Yes. How much we feel the pressure for that iPad or that toy or that. Um, special jacket that my wife would, you know, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. we don't really have any needs in our home. We look around saying, how can we get rid of some of the stuff we have? <laughs> <laughs> and yet we feel this pressure that we have to have the latest. Mm -hmm. We have to have something that maybe isn't quite as worn or whatever. And I have to put my face on the floor before God and say, Lord, I repent. Mm -hmm convert my heart, and take away my selfishness. Yes. 
Yes. So, okay, so then um, what is, you say 100% goes to frontline missions That's with right. the annual sacrifice offering. And I understand um, what happened between 1921 and, and today. So it was started in 22, and um, for years it helped um, the mission budget of the church. After some time, it actually um, was parsed out to different mission ventures. Say, say, you know, some of the various mission projects and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in 1995, the church mm -hmm. decided to reevaluate mm -hmm. this particular offering, mm -hmm. and um, it was given to Global Mission. Mm -hmm. um, there are really, I think, two primary ways of given to Global Mission. Global Mission is the support of church planting globally, mm -hmm. um, and the two primary ways are through the annual sacrifice offering and through the direct donations via mail or the website, www.adventistmission.org, okay. where people donate directly. And this 100% of it goes to help plant new congregations in, and I want to say this carefully, John, in territories that even traditional missionaries could not go to. Mm. Um, places where the religious environment mm -hmm where the challenge factor is so high mm -hmm. that um, we send actually a local missionary, somebody who already speaks their language, understands the culture, mm -hmm. who may not be seen or detected like a foreign face would. I see. In, in, and uh, we find that the church planting efforts are far more effective that way. Okay. All right. So... Um you're, what's the difference between global mission and Adventist mission? Because they both have mission, and I think global mission is Adventist, and Adventist mission is global. Right? Uh, you got you give ask me a good question. Let me see if I can detail this carefully. Global mission was started in 1990, and it is the church's the Seventh Day Adventist Church initiative to start new congregations mm -hmm. where there has never been one. Okay, and there are two functions of this. Mm -hmm. One is the Global Mission Pioneers that mm -hmm. plant churches. Mm -hmm. The other is the Global Mission Study Centers or the Global Mission Centers mm -hmm. that help train Adventist membership how to mm -hmm. understand how to build bridges with people of other religious faiths. I see. Okay. Um, now, both of those global are part of Global Mission. Global Mission is under the umbrella uh -huh. at the General Conference of Adventist Mission. So Adventist and, Mission is a general conference program. It's not an independent or supporting ministry. Well, you know, there is a, a supporting ministry called Adventist Frontier Missions. Okay. That sends foreign missionaries cross-culturally, mm -hmm. and they're an absolutely outstanding ministry. We, we, um, we appreciate all the ministries that are doing some form of mission. Mm -hmm. um, we have plenty of the world to reach, so... Mm -hmm. We're happy that there are other ministries like Adventist Frontier Missions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no no competition there. We... But you know, I I would I would suppose that everybody feels like they want to um, appeal to people to sacrifice for this cause, mm -hmm. and I think everybody is to some degree achieving that. So um, you know, we're happy that there are many people who are interested in this cause. Yes, yes. So um, basically. I've got a tight envelope here. Okay. And uh, how would I donate? Yeah, you can see this tight envelope. This one happens to be from the uh, Georgia Cumberland Conference, where we're at. And um, how would I mark this Adventist well, uh, annual sacrifice offering? You know, and every tithe envelope is different. There's not a uniform tithe envelope around the world. Uh -huh. Every conference. Um, has uh, something to do with the design. So mm -hmm. it depends on where you're at. Okay. But on most, you have to write in annual sacrifice or GC annual sacrifice offering. Yeah. I so, can't read it even if it was held up close. Okay, so I, I just write in annual sacrifice and then put in the amount and drop this in the, in the, in the offering plate. That should go to us or go to the website and um, 
donate directly. Okay, okay. AdventistMission.org. That's right. <coughs> That's right. Okay. Now, All right. there yes. are other offerings. Mm -hmm. 13th Sabbath offering. There's... Mm -hmm. um, what is called world budget, and, mm -hmm. and all of those have uh, something to do with the church's operation of mission as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I did a little looking at the 13th Sabbath offering. Um, would you like to know more about that? Sure, go for it. Okay, the 13th Sabbath offering was originally mm -hmm. an offering that helped um, support the world budget. Mm -hmm. And anything that was an over and above the world budget would be given to special projects. Mm -hmm. It was originally called the 13th Sabbath overflow, overflow. budget. Right. And so um, through the years, you know, we've seen Mission Spotlight, we've seen um, the Adventist Mission DVDs, we've seen the different promotions of these special projects. Mm -hmm. Some years ago, the word overflow was removed when one year there, the budget wasn't met. Mm. And so instead of um, taking only the remainder above and beyond mm -hmm. that budget, mm -hmm. they decided to actually assign a generous 25% of the total to these special projects that we promote. Mm. Instead of, um, you know, just taking, uh, taking it out altogether. So 25% of 13th Sabbath offering goes to helping these 13th Sabbath offering projects. Mm -hmm. Oh, sometimes it's a dormitory or a mission center or a church or mm -hmm. whatever. And 75% of it is goes to support the, the base of mission that helps send out missionaries all over the world. Okay. But the annual sacrifice offering, that's the focus on. And do you have to, do you have to, do you, can, do you only do the annual sacrifice offering once a year or can you do it any time in the year? Um, the annual sacrifice offering is collected at the mm -hmm. end of week of prayer every year. But if it is marked on your envelope, GC annual sacrifice offering, mm -hmm. it should be able to be donated any time of the year. And you're right, that's the one that gives 100% to Frontline Mission. I think we stumbled onto something. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk. We have some, we have Pastor Doug Venn waiting in the wings, and he's out there right now. And we're going to kind of talk to him about how this affects him. You may know him, uh, Rick. Yep. I don't know if you've ever met him before. Um, Doug Venn and I were student missionaries together on the <laughs> island of Palau while we were in college. Yeah, I know he uh, he met his wife over there. Is that what is that what happened to you? Yeah, Don was there too. I was around when they courted. <laughs> I bet you have some stories to tell. Yeah. Okay, we're uh, working on getting Doug here. We'll see if he pops up. But, honey, did you know that 100% uh, goes to the front lines like that? Well, I found out last week. Last week? Yeah. Wow. Well, I got excited about annual sacrifice offering. I mean, how many people actually do a whole show on an offering? Yeah, even when it's, especially when it's not their own ministry. Yeah. <laughs> But I believe that this is what we're dealing with is a call. Well, there's the man in the Hawaiian shirt. No, that's not Hawaiian. It's Indonesian. <laughs> Indonesian. Hi, Hi Rick. So Hi, now, Doug. Hi, Doug. There's the beautiful one. <laughs> Greetings from rainy Silam, uh, Cavite, Philippines. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Mission TV, TV live show. Yes, I've had a chance to watch, and my ears were burning as you guys were talking about <laughs> missions and the mission offering, and about Rick and I uh, are serving together in Palau. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Pastor Doug, you are in Manila, or near Manila, in the Philippines, and why are you there? What's your Well, right name? now I'm serving uh, as the um, Adventist Mission Director for the um, this um, uh, 14 countries of this territory, and uh, this was a job that actually uh, Rick uh, had previously and before the Lord called him elsewhere. And so um, we, right now, I'm actually meeting with the, uh, the leaders of each territory, and we're talking right now about what we can do in those areas to advance frontline work. Just a few minutes ago, while I, I signed down late, sorry about this, I was meeting with the North Philippine Union uh, leadership, uh, Pastor Manez and Pastor De Chavez and their treasurer, 
His nickname is the Colonel. And so I met with them, and they have a place uh, in the northern tip of the Philippine Islands that is unreached. And right now we need air support, uh, bringing emission airplanes, and then there's a couple islands uh, that, again, w they need air support. But and let me quote to you what he said uh, there. He goes, Doug, uh, we, we would love to go to these territories However, uh, we're facing uh, the lack of transportation and inaccessibility, but our greatest need is we're limited due to finances. Mm -hmm. And so that conversation took place 10 minutes ago while you guys were you know, getting started with Mission TV uh, Live. So we right now, thanks to the world church sacrificing, uh, you know, this isn't just here for the Asia, but this uh, offering of the world sacrifice offering goes to the whole planet. And we are able to allocate uh, for his territory $12,000. And, you know, he basically we looked at it and said, you know, that's not enough, you know, to provide the support uh, that, that's needed, even though, um, but that's what we have. And so that was, and then I'm going to have to sign off here really quick because I'm going to be meeting with SAUM. Uh, that's seven countries of our territory, which includes Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Laos, yeah. and Vietnam. And they have 43 projects and that are frontline church planting. And so this is where we get to see the front line and support them through everyone working together, everyone sacrificing. And that's the privilege of actually you caught me right now doing that work. Wow. So, so this, this annual, annual sacrifice, sacrifice, Doug, what, what would it mean to you? Well, I mean, what it means is that thanks to those who are already sacrificing, we're able to, you know, like I said, this, my next appointment was with Pastor Mok from the uh, Southern uh, Southeast Asia Union Mission with seven countries. He's got 43 projects. So we praise God for those who are already joining us in sacrifice. But imagine if everyone were to even stop chewing gum. <laughs> you know, like Pastor Rick was saying earlier. Or, you know, just find some way, you know, maybe it's one less uh, smoothie or one less, you know, uh, you know, one less pizza a, a year or something or a month. It could be something simple like that where the, we could imagine doubling or tripling our frontline work in unreached villages, tribes, and, and as well as our unreached cities. So you meet, you meet people that are on the front line. Let's say a pastor has a burden for a new village and he says, I want to go and serve in this village. And you're the one that has to say, there's no money. Or... Here's yes, it. It, so. it, it is true. It, it is true that that's where uh, I, I come and I ask them to, um, uh, you know, to dream with me to say, what is what has God placed on your heart to reach your village or reach your neighborhood in, in the city? And that's where together we look before God and we say, God, what can you bring the needs? I mean, we're pro he's promised us that the laborers are few and uh, we're to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth more workers. And so that's all I can do is just, you know, pray that, you know, God will provide, God will move upon his people. God has blessed his people already so abundantly. I know he's done that in my life and in Rick, in your life, John and Natalie and, our, and the viewers there uh, on Mission TV as well as the others. You know, those blessings are an incredible, uh, you know, an incredible part of our lives, but if we can take the opportunity then to share those yes. with those who've never heard, who, who don't have the same treasure of the gospel, treasure of grace that the scriptures give to us. Yes. So if you had to shut down, and I want to open this up to the, um, to the, to the viewers, if there's any questions that you would like to ask. I know Pastor Doug has to run. Quick question for him or, or Pastor uh, McEdward about this. Uh, topic. Um, Doug, have you, while well, we're waiting for a question, have you, either of you had to shut down a program due to lack of funds? Mm. Well, Rick, during your time here? Yeah. You have. That was hard, huh? Well, you know, 
you think about it, um, going into Bangkok, Doug, yeah. our first uh, time, you and I visiting together in Bangkok, we went to the top of the largest building in Bangkok. And we, we walked around on the top where there's 12 million people. Yeah. And we have uh, maybe at the maximum a couple thousand people who are Seventh-day Adventists in Bangkok. And yet some of the projects that you and I have seen have, have either struggled because of the mission challenge, but oftentimes it's a struggle because there haven't, hasn't been enough economic support financial support to keep them going. And, and, and it's not just in Bangkok alone, although I, you, Rick and I, you, you, we know that place intimately, thanks to Rick's support as we were frontline missionaries during our six years there. Uh, you know, I, I face this right now with some of the leaders here that I'll be spending all day with them looking at the, this very same issue of how can we with the funds that have been given, how can we expand the work? But then the reality is that, uh, you know, just like what Pastor uh, Manya said, you know, Pastor Ben, you know, we thank you so much for the $12,000, but we're going to need double that, you know, to, uh, to reach, you know, some of these islands and some of these other places. And so that's where, you know, we're going to have to make that a matter of prayer. And so this is one reason why I'm so thrilled to talk to you guys, you know, my brothers and sisters, as well as to the viewers on Mission TV, to say, you know, your sacrifice for this upcoming offering really does matter on the front line. Jesus, I mean, it's incredible. From, from the slums to the, the large cities to unreached tribes, I mean, it, it, is, it makes a difference. No, I was going to ask you what type of plane he could buy for $12,000. No, no, no. Uh, we're partnering with PAMAS, uh, the Philippine oh, Adventist the okay. Medical uh, Aviation uh, Program, uh, the missions, uh, and that's with uh, Dwayne and uh, Wendy Harris. And uh, so we're partnering with the North Philippine Union uh, mission, our conference, and so our church here in the Philippines, as well as with the supporting ministry, to say, how can we partner together? Uh, Dwayne, I asked him, what what is his airfare, you know, what's it cost for, you know, an hour of flying? And it's about 150 to 200 bucks an hour, and that's not even covering his fuel costs. And so that's something right now, if you think of the logistical support of, you know, flying in, uh, you know, the missionaries, getting training, some of these other things, uh, they're also trying to offer to the communities air ambulance service. So then that way they offer to the uh, communities free of charge. If someone has a medical emergency, they will fly the, the sick individual and their family to the established medical care. So this is, anyway, it's a, a beautiful work, but, you know, it won't happen unless God's people are moved and they share that grace that they have with others. And maybe it, it, the only cost it will be, like Rick said, is a, a pack of gum. Yeah. Yeah. Or a whole, whole year's, year's worth, worth of packs of, packs of gum. gum. Yes. So, thank, thank you, Pastor Doug. Doug. I know you're in a hurry. Uh, God, God bless you as you go to your next meetings. We will, will carry the work forward best as we can over here, year, trying to arouse people to give, give and then be part of this amazing work. work. It's, it's good, good to put a face on the frontier, frontier missions. missions. So, yeah, and actually, if you stayed on longer, we're going to have Pastor Joshua Mock, and we're going to have the leaders all throughout the day, but you guys can't, I mean, that's what I'm going to be doing for the next probably eight hours, is meeting with mission leaders and looking at, thanks to the sacrifice of God's people, you know, we, I, like Rick said, we don't want to, um, you know, communicate that there are, few, there are those who are already sacrificing, and for that, we say thank you. Praise God. And, but there are so many more who could have that joy of sacrifice and it, we, it would then turn into souls and imagine meeting a hundred people, maybe from an unreached village in heaven, and they come to you and say, you know what, thank you so much for sacrificing, we're here now. Or imagine a neighborhood in, in a city 
that they are now singing praises forever around the throne of grace because of what you have done, what your family has done, what your business has done. We can work together, and it will take, and like Rick said, uh, it takes, as we look at history in the past of uh, our Adventist history, it was a systematic benevolence where people sacrifice not based on uh, an emotional appeal or a slick video, but because God has given them grace and they're out of a heart full of love, they then share that. And that sister, uh, Betsy, is what they called it in Adventist history, that systematic benevolence. That is what we need to be bringing back. So in that way, upon everyone. Now, for those who uh, are you know, earning lots of funds, their sacrifice is going to be different than for a working class logger or you know, someone working at Taco Bell. Uh, you know, it's going to be different, but it's equal sacrifice that will then push the work forward. So, so, so basically, basically um, the, the sacrifice, sacrifice this, <sighs> there, there could be so much more. more. We, we can, can do so much more with, with the resources, resources God has given us. And, and I think that's the bottom line. line. Yeah, things, things are happening. And, and my take on it, and, and I know I'm a heretic, but my take on it is that <laughs> our giving has gotten to the point. point. There are people that do sacrifice, but statistically, our giving, we've almost abandoned missions. We're, we're, we, you know, we, we're doing enough to, to, to be able to pat our back on the back and say, you know, we're doing something. We're doing missions. But as far as compared to what we could do, it could be huge. And you think about it, this is the bank of heaven. Souls, the work that you're doing over there, the work that Pastor Rick is doing with the studying these different religions to figure out how best to reach them. It's like, duh. You know, you know, we, we should have done, done this 100 years, years ago, but this is, this is the bank of heaven because we're going to be enjoying the payoff from that investment in people for the rest of eternity. Yeah. That kind of that relationship and stuff. So, you know, the passion, yeah, there's, yeah, we're passionate about this because this is, this is our investment. This, is, this isn't just a program. Yeah. It's people's eternal lives. Let, let me tell you two stories. I remember uh, going to a faith camp and uh, a family uh, who's, uh, they're loggers. And so they're, they're, they work hard for the money. I remember them giving us a check for $20. And I realized that that was a sacrifice from that family. And what a blessing and what stewardship I had to do to bring that to the Thailand mission. And then that would help us with our church planting frontline work there in Bangkok. I just received from a foundation, from a corporation, forty thousand mm. dollars for our frontline church planting work. Nice now, enough. this year, that twenty dollars and that forty thousand, both groups had to sacrifice. Mm. But if we can have that member, uh, you know, uh, shared with all of our members, Amen. that that to have that joy, to have that privilege. Imagine, you know, Rick, what difference would that make from, from your perspective? I mean, I'm just talking here about Asia. Yeah. You know, the truth is, is that um, the place where you are, Doug, um, is, is duplicated globally. You think about the needs around the world and uh, you think of uh, billions of people who do not know Jesus as a Lord and Savior. Mm. Uh, billions of people who have never heard of the love of God. Um, they may think of him as a cruel tyrant. Uh, you think of the, the uh, 503 cities around the world that have more than 1 million people in them mm -hmm. and how our Adventist footprint in those cities is quite small. Um, it, it, it's moving. Yeah. So, so I, I think, think we, we all ought to gather together, together. As, as a church, church and make, make this effort, effort make, make it a priority in our lives. Huge priority. Well, well we, we don't, don't have very much time left, but I do want to invite our viewers to call 423-413-7321 if you have a question for these gentlemen that have taken the time to be with us this evening, or if you'd like to email a question to live at missiontv.com, send it by Facebook at Mission TV Live or by Twitter at Mission TV underscore com. Any of those ways, and it will get here. If, you're, if you'd like to be on live, we can take that call, too. So please call or email. Hey, John and Natalie. And, uh, 
Um, just recently, I was visiting one of the world's largest cities. And um, there's a couple of the details I'm going to not share so we don't incriminate him. But I went around for about a week with a young man who has just met Jesus, who is so alive with his walk with God that he said, I want to do everything in my power to um, live for Jesus. Amen. And he is um, living sacrificially. Somebody in the church has given him a place to stay. Another person um, gave him some wheels so he can get around. He's living on a, a few hundred dollars a month. And he is a living testament. He has built bridges with people from his own um, ethnic background, which is one of the most unreached people groups in the world. Um, that are flooding to this large city. Um, he has built uh, bridges with people of several different religious backgrounds, including some of the most difficult to reach people groups. And when I look at the faith of this young man, I think so much of all the global mission pioneers around the world who are living faithfully, who go where there's nobody, who are living faithfully, who, you know, they go out all alone into it could be a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Hindu neighborhood, and they go out there and they say, who do I talk to first? And they start praying, Lord, open a way for me to make a contact, to give a Bible study, to love somebody, to, to care for my neighbor. And little by little by little, a new worship group, a small group, a house church is established in that place. And uh, this young man that I saw um, actually is studying with 30 people every week. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Um, and, and it just, I mean, I, it was an electric week for me. Mm. I could not deny that the Lord was moving in that city. Um, this included visiting some prisons and some other places because, you know, immigrants unfortunately get uh, thrown into uh um, immigration issues and legal stuff way too often. Mm. Yeah. So, so this, this is the kind of work that can be multiplied, multiplied just, just by a little, little bit of extra, extra giving. giving. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it makes a huge difference. And what if we actually sacrifice? sacrifice? Yeah. yeah. You know, what, what if we do live up to the one week? week? If everybody... Pastor Doug has something to say. Do you, do you need to excuse yourself? Well, just if everybody gave an extra $20 over what they normally give in the year, that would double mission giving from North America. That's true, but imagine if they sacrificed and gave a week's worth of wages like the offering was set up with that challenge. Can you imagine the joy there would be in heaven? It's like, wow, my, my church is finally, they, they, they trust me. Yeah. That they, they can sacrifice. They're getting serious about my other children. And, and they join me in my, in my sacrifice. Yeah. Hey, John, you mentioned if everybody gave a week, but uh -huh. even if every member of the church gave $1, $1, one dollar in the annual sacrifice offering, there would be $15 million. And so a week of work, we're talking about... Um, millions and millions of dollars that would go to help start churches around the world. That'd, That'd be really, really cool. cool. I, think I think we ought to do that. that. I think we ought to challenge, re-challenge the church to do that again. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I, think I think we might be a little bit late for this year to get them to do it, to do it you know, know, next Sabbath, but we can, we can start and we can keep telling them and we're, them and we're going to air this show over and over again. So by next year, we ought to have the word out to a number more people. Like Pastor Rick said, even if we get it in late, it still, still goes to the same place. place. Right. That's so, true. So it's all good. Doug, you're, you're talking, talking to somebody there in your office. Yeah, Pastor Joshua Moktas walked in, and so uh -huh. I just wanted to let him know we're live on Mission TV with the interview with John and Natalie Wood with Jesus for Asia and Rick McEdward from our uh, General Conference Advanced Mission Study Center director. So Joshua Moktas walked in, and so did Greg Witz, uh, who is our uh, Study Center director for uh, the uh, Center for East Asia Religions and uh, traditions. And so we are just now about to, we're gonna have to sign off from you guys because we're now going to focus on the seven countries, uh, Southeast Asia Union mission and the mission challenges as well as then looking at how 
through the sacrifice of God's people, those who are already sacrificing and those who are being moved by God's and prompted by His Spirit to reach these seven nations. Uh, that's half of our SSD territory, the Indochina, uh, from Vietnam to uh, up to Laos, Cambodia, you know, Malaysia, Singapore. And so we're going to be talking about how we can advance that message of hope now. So pray for us as we now um, uh, sign off and we're going to uh, get into that work. So well, God bless you and we will keep you in prayers here with our, with our group. Great to see you, Pastor Mock and Greg Whitsitt, and uh, we'll be praying for you guys. Thank you. Uh, Greg, how are you? <laughs> Great, thank you. I miss you. Yeah, you're missed, Greg. <laughs> All right, God bless. God we'll pray for you. Bye-bye. Okay, okay, Pastor, Pastor Rick, thank, thank you so much for joining with us. With us. I, I think we're getting, getting to the end. end. Yeah. And, uh, we're almost out of, out of time. Did, Did you have one more question, question for him? Or? Yeah. yeah. Um, what? Uh, how, can how can we turn, turn this thing around? around? I mean, we've um, we've we've got a we've got a a, 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 a world to, to warn, uh, not just warn, but to, to invite to the marriage feast. Well, and, you know, it's both and. We want to invite people to the gospel, and we need to warn them that uh, they need to be ready for the judgment day. I mean, th there's, a, there's a delight in sharing what we have, isn't there? Yes. And um, I, I am, I'm afraid that with so many voices calling for our attention, whether it's the toothpaste ads and the billboards, the uh, radio station on the way to work, the television, the internet, or even if I want to say all of the variety of very good causes calling for our attention, I think that we have to sort out between the good and the best. Mm -hmm. And um, longing for Jesus to come soon, we want to remember that he deserves the best of our attention, including um, giving until it tickles. <laughs> Amen. Well, you had you, you had a question, question earlier in our meeting, 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 honey, that you were going to ask Pastor Rick. Do you remember what it was? And that was, how do we educate the pastors so that they educate the church members so that we're not all continually in the dark like we have been? Yes. Well, I, first of all, I want to say I appreciate the partnership that you guys are, are willing to give to this. And I think it takes a lot of us to turn it around. Mm -hmm. um, there is a natural bent. I've been a pastor for years. Mm -hmm. There's a natural inclination on the part of pastors to be more concerned about the local mission than the global mission because it's what's right in front of us all the time. Yeah. Being a pastor is tough. It's a struggle day to day to try to even evangelize one soul in the community, to teach your members how to give Bible studies. Mm -hmm. So I understand the struggle that pastors have in so many things coming across their desk. But I guess I would just uh, give an appeal if there's any pastors listening to the program or members of churches who could talk to their pastor to say, maybe this one deserves a shot. In a day when the, the strength of our giving is declining because the, the value of global currency is just struggling. In the day when um, the um, North American division is declining in its um, giving percentage-wise to mission, then maybe we need to reevaluate our own local um, giving. When I was a pastor, Natalie, um, I was a little bit afraid to give to mission. And uh, one, my conference president approached me and he said, Rick, you do not need to be afraid of giving to mission. And I said, why is that? He said, because if you give to mission, your tithe base will go up, your offerings will go up, and the Lord's harvest will increase as a result of your faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, let me give it a try. That year we started raising money for, uh, yes, it was part of, partly a mission trip, but other parts of mission, uh, including the worldwide work of the church, and uh, we saw our tithe and our offerings in our local church shoot up. Um, when my conference saw that, you know, they changed our staffing formula. I actually got an associate pastor. Uh, I, you know, 
<laughs> what pastor wouldn't want that kind of growth? Yeah. Right. Um, and so selfishly, we can say, well, yes, but quite honestly, it's really about faithfulness. And so I would appeal that all of us need to reevaluate what we're doing and, and consider um, God's harvest as our greatest priority. Amen. 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 Well, thank, well, thank you, you so much, much for joining us tonight, tonight Pastor Rick. It's, it's such a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, you guys. Yeah. yeah. All right. yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm, I'm sure, sure we'll, we'll have you again, again sometime. You're always welcome. <laughs> All right. Thank All right. you very much. All All right. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Your program. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. Praise the Lord. Well, that was, that was quite educational. Yes. Yeah. I want to finish up with this, la- this quote. This is at the end of that same article from Mrs. White. Says and the this Lord, is, I read this earlier, but you can read it again. Okay, the, sell, the Lord bids us sell that you have and give alms. That means give to the poor, give offerings. Provide for yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that fadeth not, where no fee, thief approacheth, neither moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm. And I think there's two things here so amazingly important because we're not just giving and throwing it away. Right. Whenever we give to God's cause, something good happens. Not only out there, but in here. Mm-hmm. And not only for now, but for eternity. So mm-hmm. even if we give and we never hear about what it does now, we will meet that again in the future. So I'm just excited. I'm excited about promoting this, uh, this, this offering. All right. Well, thank you, dear. And I'm, I'm so thankful that Skype worked well tonight and Lord. we could speak with both of them it was such a blessing Beginning and i know was. that our questions a bunch of our questions were answered that we came up with and with our team this week yeah. and uh, so. you know i just want to i just want to challenge our viewers to pray and to seek god and to consider the challenge that's been laid before this, this evening to go back to the ways of our fathers from 1921 when they first made the annual sacrifice offering churchwide And that was a challenge to give a week's worth of wages to the frontline mission work. So I challenge you to do that as well. And I would like to ask that you would put it on your tithe envelope under the world missions section, which is usually the bottom section, write annual sacrifice offering in there, or go to AdventistMission.org and give it there, or write a check to the general conference and write it annual sacrifice offering on the check and it will go and it will help to spread the gospel it will go to places like pastor doug is at right now and imagine how many people how many more people will be in heaven because of your sacrifice because of our sacrifice because if we all sacrifice together how much more can be done if one person sacrifices that is so wonderful but if 10 or 100 or 1.1 1.1 million in North American division or 15 million in the entire church. If we're all sacrificing for the sake of God's other children, imagine what kind of joy that will bring to the Father's heart. May God bless you until we see you again on the Mission TV Live next Monday night at 8 p.m. <laughs>